Let's see. All right, we are live. We are live. All right, let me jump in and should get a little shares going here. Got it here. Let's see. Let's share this around a little bit. Here we go. Let's share this to some groups. Let all our people see it. Hopefully, we got audio. Last can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me make sure you can hear it on your phone. Last week, last we've got an audio issue. So before we go through the whole thing, I want to make sure that audio is up. Share the group. You guys are going to share it to Apex? I'm going to share it to um, Entourage. We'll share it to Entourage. Okay. I just shared it to my group. I'll share it to Iconic. <laughs> yeah, do that. Perfect. Do a share here. I'll share it on the elite page as well. All right, all right I shared it to a couple here. groups. All right, all right. We'll share here and then we'll go. We'll get going. All right, cool. I shared it to my profile. Right. All right, we got the shares going. Here we go. All right, all right. Sounds good. All right, we are live. We are back Monday night. Get some fire live. And tonight we have Sammy's stunt double, Benny. <laughs> what is up? <laughs> so uh, Benny Montalbano is here with us tonight in report in. Uh, in place of our buddy Sam Smith, because Sam had a lot going on tonight, and uh, he asked uh, if his stunt double could uh, step in. So, Benny choose to fill, my friend. Benny's been Big working on his uh, English accent, so uh, you know we'll see. Uh, by golly, it's tea time and stuff like that out of Benny. Oh wait, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. Got to play your theme music. <laughs> <laughs> my English, it's my English theme song, okay? If you're a big fan of the British Bulldog back in the day with the WWF. He was my ultimate favorite. Oh, there you go. All right, all right. And tonight we got a treat for you, special guest, Max Neist. And uh, Max has a uh, pretty cool story. Tonight we got a treat for you. Yeah, you can shut that off. No, maybe? All right, we're good. <laughs> So Max has a pretty cool story. Max, um, oh, someone's got, feedback. got some feedback, feedback, right? Yeah, I can kill that. Yeah, feedback on. I think we got audio though. Seems like we got audio. All right, all right. So Max, some feedback, right? Yeah, we all right. We lose our feedback. Does anybody have it up and running in the background? I have nothing running in the background. So what's that say? Yeah, up and running in the background. <laughs> no? Crazy to have uh, feedback like that. That's weird. No, we lose our feedback. We good? Crazy to have feedback like that. Oh, this is annoying. Can you hear me? All right, I think we're good. I can hear you. I think we're good. Feedback now, is right? gone. All right, I we think lost so. feedback. All right, good. Just awesome. Take... Sorry about that. First world problems here. All right, so sorry for the feedback. Uh, hopefully this is uh, streaming for everybody. Um, let me just double check that we didn't lose the signal at the same time that we lost feedback. We're up and running, Brian. It's working. You can see it. You got it on your yes. phone? Yes, right, sir. Good. Yep, we're check. good. All right, so we are good. So we have Max on tonight. Max has a uh, pretty cool story. Um He's, uh, he's been involved in a lot. Navy veteran, thank you for your service. Um, thank you. Thank you uh, for your service. Super important. Um, we uh, thank all of our veterans because I don't know how you guys do it, uh, leaving your families and putting your life on the line for us uh, to make this world a great country it is. So thank you for that. And uh, Max um, is basically in the, uh, I guess, the drug and alcohol world of, of counseling and, uh, and uh, basically getting people's lives back on track. Uh, which yes, is a sir. mission from God there. 
Um, yeah. We know there's a lot of us struggle with that type of stuff, and um, it's super important, especially in this age of COVID and all the madness going out in the world. I think a lot of people are are going down that route, and uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of mental illness and stuff that's going on out there, and no one knows how to deal with it, so they escape. And uh, why don't you tell us more about that, Max? Well, uh, thank you for having me on first, Brian and uh, Benny. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, my story starts about, well, if you think about it, when I speak, like say at an AA meeting, I always like to share, I went to a party when I was 13 <laughs> and I didn't get home till I was 32. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of headache and heartache. And, you know, I don't like to talk a lot about the war stories, right? Because we all got them. We all know what it's like. And, um, but I got sober in 2003, right? I was actually sitting in a sober living uh, when I got high for the last time. It was my fourth relapse. What happened was I got this nudge, as they say, from a judge, right? Before I had gotten sober. So the height of my addic addiction lasted about nine years where it was really, really bad. So to just give you a background, I went from a suit and tie, like say the house, the white picket fence and kids, to the streets in about a year's time. That's how fast my addiction took off, right? Because not only was I drinking, <clears throat> excuse me, I was shooting meth, right? So when I found the needle, it was over, hmm. right? Because I didn't have to feel Common anything. story, common story. We hear that all the time. Once people yeah. go down that road, it just goes fast. <laughs> yeah, and it went fast, right? And uh, so for about the nine years that it really got bad, I, you know, I didn't see my kids. Uh, and they could literally be in the house next door. Um, family and friends would pretty much want nothing to do with me. But see, I was the type of guy, when I knew it was getting bad, like the core group of friends I hung out with in high school, I disappeared on them because I didn't want to be known as that guy like, hey, here comes Max, lock up your house and, you know, bat in the hatches because he's going to take all your stuff. I just disappeared, right? And then I just started running with the wrong crowd, right? And you know, it went from minor offenses, you know, fast forward, I'm, I'm getting in trouble, things are getting worse. Um, so right before I get sober, it was, I was in this town next to where I lived, right? One street divided Orange County from LA County and the, and the city next to us was really known for its gang activity. So I was actually picking up a friend who was a gang member for this friend of mine. And she asked me if I would do it. And I'm like, sure. Little did, you know, I'm on the run. I have no license. I'm in my mom's car. I have no register. nothing. But I'm like, sure, I'll go get it. And everything I owned was in that trunk of that car. Mm -hmm. And um, so I remember pulling out of the street, right? I go onto the main street and all of a sudden I see the lights and, and it's LA County Sheriff gang unit. And they pull me over. And it was like that moment when I knew like I'm done, like I'm 30 something years old. Like I'm tired. You know what I mean? Like I'm just thinking to myself. So as the sheriffs are walking up, one on his side on the passenger and the guy coming up on my side, I said, hey, officer, I go, look, I got a warrant. You need to just take me in. I'm done. And I'll never forget. He just kind of had this, you know, like I could see him in the rearview mirror. He's got this look like, what did he say? Yeah. And I told him, I said, I got a warrant. You need to take me in. All right. So they let the guy who was a gang member walk home and they, they took, <laughs> they took <laughs> me in. And uh, but I had a warrant and that's why. And, and that began my journey really when I was at my wit's end, right? So I go, I spend five days in LA County, you know, and then Orange County comes, gets me on that last day, brings me back to Orange County. And, and that's where I've had these moments early on, at least moments of clarity as they call them for me. And I remember it was just like, you know, like prison sounded good at that time, if, if it makes sense to you, right? Cause I was done, like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know at the time, I didn't know what AA was or any, any 12 step recovery stuff. I didn't know what treatment was. I didn't know what sober living was. And I remember going, you know, I was sitting in Orange County and it was about two weeks in my mom comes to visit. And it, here's one of those moments. She, she picks up the phone. We're looking at each other across the glass. And before I could say anything, she says, son, I love you, but you're no longer welcome at my home. If you come near my home, I'm going to call the police. Right. And if my neighbors see you, mm. I told them to call the police. So what are you going to do? And that was the first time in my life where I just looked at her and I said, I don't know. And then she starts crying and I'm like, why are you crying? Right. Some of you heard this story. Like, why are you crying? You get to go home. I get to go back to my cell. And she told me that was the best answer I'd ever given her. Right. Because 
at that moment, the empty promises stopped, mm. right? Like I didn't tell her, okay, when I get out, I'll get a job. I'll find the kids so you could be a grandma again. You know, all these promises I used to do. And, you know, as soon as I would get out, I was back doing the, what I did best. And little did I know that would begin my journey to recovery, you know, from active addiction into recovery. And, you know, but still I'm going through the process uh, it's my last violation as they call it, you know? So like now say I get arrested for anything, I go to orange County, they're going to go like, you're going to prison. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at three years in prison and they're trying to give me these places. And I remember arguing, like raising my hand, like, Oh, your honor, you shouldn't send me there unless you want me to have a new charge. Right. <laughs> like people yelling at me and calling me names is not for a place for me to go. And they came up with this other place called the Hope House, which has a timeout bench. And I was like, literally, sir, like, honor you, sir, timeout bench. Like, I told him, I go, that's something I give my kids. I go, <laughs> pretty funny, actually. <laughs> timeout you know, jail. Like, I, I go, you put me on that timeout bench, I'm going to get up and walk out, and you'll see me back here in no time. You know, and he was just like, and he told me, he goes, I will not leave, let you leave this facility because you're not going to go to the streets to do what you were doing before. So you have two choices I send you to prison or we find you a place. And lo and behold, he kept me there like probably a week or two shy of my full six month violation. Right. Which back then, if you had good time, you would do four months instead of the full six. And that started my journey. They found a place. It was like a sober living slash treatment. And um, I remember I got out of jail. I hadn't smoked a cigarette in six months. And I'll never forget, I'm on the balcony. Right. My my room had a balcony and I'm smoking and I'm like watching the cars whiz by like. You know, it was like I was locked up for 20 years or something. I'm yeah. like, wow, this is so cool, right? And I remember that I finally went to sleep about 3, 3.30, almost 4 in the morning. And then all of a sudden the lights are on and the house manager is like, 5.15, gentlemen, time to get up. We're going to meeting. And he wasn't that quiet, if you know what I mean. Like he, <laughs> and I'm like, man, who goes to a meeting at 6 o'clock in the morning, right? And uh, yeah, and that began. And I rocked into my first AA meeting. Um at 6 a.m. and they were all laughing and having coffee and i'm just like man these people are weird <laughs> and, and i remember this lady we're friends still today she's over 25 years sober and i remember her walking up and hugging me and saying welcome and if, if you could have seen it i stick like right i stiffened up because when i got out of jail at that time all i had was a tank top board shorts and i had nothing like mm. everything had been taken stolen stripped away from me I had to borrow some sweatpants, put it that way, right? I had no pockets. And I remember I was checking my pockets and, and the house manager goes, Max, you got nothing. She doesn't want anything. She's just saying, welcome, just sit down and listen. And I just thought, you know, where I came from, nobody was hugging me, Yeah. you know, and that began my journey. And, you know, yes, I'm a 12 stepper and, and it's my, my foundation that has kept me sober for over 18 years now. It's awesome. And, um, you know, but I, I've realized in my years of being clean and sober and 13 years as being a drug and alcohol counselor that people find different ways to get sober. Right. But in the beginning, you should have, I was like hardcore. I was that hardcore counselor would be like, Brian, if you don't do the 12 steps, you're going to die. And you know, blah, blah, blah. and I'd be in your face and you're like, Whoa, dude, chill out. Right. Worse, so now, worse than boot, worse than boot camp. I bought as bad as a drill sergeant. Yep. Like if you don't do it my way, you're going to die. Yeah. I'm going to help you die. If you don't do it my way kind of thing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I know best and you better listen to me, but um, you know, with time and, and, you know, finding my own path and, you know, watching people find other ways. I realize that I just meet people where they're at. If they want to do the 12 steps, then I support them and I, you know, hold them accountable. If they want to do something else, I just say, you know, my thing is find what works for you and let's do it. Right. Kind of like almost like little did I know it'd be like Apex. Right. Do yeah. the work. I don't yeah. care what it is. But if you want to do this right, you got to do the work. You want to stay clean and sober. You got to do the work. And I don't care if it's the Buddhist 12 steps. I don't care if it's N.A.S.A. N.A.A.A. Triple A. Do it. Right. Yeah. Don't just sit on your butt and think, OK, I'm I'm not doing drugs or alcohol now. I'm going to stay sober because. I know a lot of people that have tried it that way and it doesn't work. You know what I mean? I feel like you got you to gotta want it, I think, is this part of it, too. I mean, where you hit that wall where you said, please take me in. I'm done. I'm done running. I'm done being tired. I'm done. And I think it takes a lot of times for people to hit that wall. Benny, I know, you know, hit it a couple of times with, with the drink and stuff. He's finally said, that's enough. Enough. And I've done it myself. When I started 75 hard, I was drinking heavy. I was eating my face off. And 
never done drugs in my life, but I like to drink. And um, I was at a point where I'm, I just, I'm tired. I'm tired of waking up with a headache. I'm tired of being hungover. I'm tired of not making good choices. And boom, 75 hard was what I needed. Was, that was my sober up. Kick myself right. in the ass. And, yeah, I mean, um, you know, it, it's, it's tough though. Like, you know, you hit walls and, and, you know, you think it's fun. And, you know, after a while you really, what really hit me and resonated with me was when my son, my youngest who told me, daddy, please, you have to stop. And, you know, look, it, it sucks because, you know, a little guy like that doesn't really know too much. But then when, you know, when it, that, when that resonates in you, inside of you, and then you start to see all the damage you've done uh, with relationships or with, you know, your spouse and all the things around the house. And, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those things that, allows you to be free when you say enough is enough. Yeah. And being in control was it of hard? the situation. You know? Was it hard? Hell yeah, it was hard. But you know what? Uh, if it wasn't for Apex and the people I surrounded myself with, and I was fortunate enough not to have to go into a program, I was about to check into something, uh, and then COVID hit. And then I just have a very, very strong willpower to, if I tell you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something, I'm going to do it. And right. I stuck by it. And, and, and I've been around people, family members that have, you know, relapsed and done some crazy things and I've lost cousins and stuff like that. But, you know, when you take a look at that stuff and then you start doing things and now you start to hurt your family, you know, I think enough is enough. And people know me in the community as a very good person. And I want to keep that reputation going because you know what? I am a good person. I'm, I give to my community. I give to the people that I'm around and I love my family Dearly, and I and I would do anything for them, just like I would do for you guys, my the, my family of choice. So, you know, absolutely. Yeah, you know, sure. But I got one question for you, Max. Um, is yes, this sir. something that um happened to you after you came out of the service, or is this something that just? Uh, so if I go way back, right to the service. So back in high school, unless I was playing football, party was on. You know what I mean? Back in I graduated in 1986, so. You know how it is. After the football game, you're asking, hey, where's the keg party, man? Yeah, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> we lost <laughs> every we game, but we partied like crazy. <laughs> yeah, we did, too. I think we won two that whole year, my senior year. But you know what I mean? That was like, and I always maintained a C average. But then once football and whatever was over, it was party on. And then I didn't care. So it started way back then. Little, But I didn't see the red flags, if you know what I mean. I joined the service because so my wonderful mother, God rest her soul. Right. So she's seeing me do this partying, right. In my senior year. And I'd come home party all weekend. Sunday would roll around, you know, 12 o'clock, two o'clock rolls around. And she's like, he's still sleeping, man. Like no way is this going to happen in my house. And she basically came in one night and she, or one morning. And she says, you got three choices, bud, pretty much. And uh, here they are is one, you work full time Two, you work, part-time and go to school part uh, part-time or you go to school full-time those are your three choices other than that you're out you're not going to do this you're not going to come home party all weekend and then sleep you know for a day or two and right because back in high school i started experimenting not only with drinking and marijuana then cocaine you know was popular back then um little did i know that it would lead me to methamphetamine which became like you know my everything. And that's what took me down so fast. Um, yeah. So I, I joined the service. Right. So the next best thing is I see that commercial back in 1986 and it says, not just a job, it's an adventure. Right. And they would show the ships on the ocean, you know, and you or you know, that's why. I, and then guess what came out right after was or right before that was um, Top Gun. Remember? <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to be a pilot. Yeah, I'm going to sign. <laughs> right. So um I sign up because I, in my heart, I knew if I didn't do something like that, where I had some structure and someone telling me what I needed to do, it was not going to be pretty. Right. So I joined the service. I ended up getting in trouble on my ship. Right. Uh, for doing cocaine. And wow. so it started even back then. But see, here's what happened. Right. So I went to boot camp in San Diego. I got my orders to go to school in San Francisco or Treasure Island, which is closed now. But there was a little. On the other side of the Bay Bridge was this little island where they had a lot of school for the A school, as they called it, for, you know, whatever job you're doing. 
And then, so they ask you, right, where do you want to go? They give you what they call the dream sheet. And, you know, they just, we can't guarantee it, but just put down where you'd like to go. So my top three, one was Spain, one was Portugal. And I think the third that was as close to California as I was going to get was Hawaii. I didn't even put anywhere in California. And I get my orders and it's Long Beach, California, the day I graduate. And I'm like, mom, don't pack my room. And she's like, why? I go, I'm coming. I got stationed in Long Beach. I'm coming home. She goes, what happened to your adventure? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I, of course, I'm going back to the fire, as they say. I got out of the fire, right, out of the pan, thinking the Navy would help me, you know, but, but here I knew it was going to be bad. So, like, when I got to San Francisco, it was called Fleet Week that day, that week, right, where all the – Officers stayed home. on board ship, right? And they, they toured the ships for all the civilians. So all the enlisted men got to go on the pier. Well, guess who's playing a free concert? So I'm 18 years old, and there's Stevie Ray Vaughn playing a free concert <laughs> yeah. for all the enlisted guys. And there's all the free beer we could drink, you know. And I'm 18, and I'm like, man, if this is what the Navy is about, I did the right <laughs> thing. I was all, <laughs> you know, and, and I had a buddy and all of us would go drink every night. It didn't matter if we had school the next day. I remember waking up so many times like, oh man, that pan was big, man. Who just hit me? You know, that yeah. big old diesel truck. Yeah. But I managed to graduate at the top, you know, top 5% of the class. And, and then I get Long Beach and, you know, right back into the fire. And that's where I got in trouble. And it started, you know, it just started all over again. And and then I found out I was having a baby when I met who is now my ex-wife back then. And I quit everything, right? And I, I would drink a little bit here and there, but I knew I want to be a dad. I quit smoking that. I just bought a brand new pack of Marlboro Red Box and I threw it in the trash when I found out she was pregnant. So I had quit smoking. I quit drinking, you know, quit doing all the funny stuff. And it just, you know. Uh, it lasted for a while because when my kids were little, you know, I got into wanting to be a fireman. So I went to school, became a, I went to the fire academy, started testing and all that stuff. And then, but what happened, like fast forward as the marriage started to crumble, right? I started to crumble. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, when the divorce was final and I found out she took my kids and left to uh, Nebraska without telling me wow. that was my green light to go. Okay. Now, you know, green light. Full steam ahead, doesn't matter. And, you know, it just, per it got bad quick. And then, like I said, it went from like tickets for driving without like, without registration, out of, without a license to felony. And I got a felony. And, and then, you know, there I am looking at the judge going, yeah, you haven't done anything I asked. Um, I think, I, you know, you have two choices find your place or you're going to prison. So, luckily for me, this judge gave me a third chance. And he, he sent me to that place after my three, right? Because he was like fed up with me. And, you know, I relapsed in that place four times. And, um, but it was the last one that was like the worst, even though it was one time, you know what I mean? That feeling that came over me, like, here I go again. I'm either going to die or I'm going to go to prison, right? And then like, I, this is where I called divine intervention took place. So after the house manager came to the <clears throat> door and said, he knew, he saw it in my eyes. I had just gotten high in the house, right? In the office now. And I'm like, oh, here I go. So I'm going, I'm getting dressed. And then I hear a knock at the door. I'm like, who's this? Right. And it's the director of the place who never came on a weekend, let alone a Sunday. Right. Like, why is she here? Like, did he call her and tell on me? And I opened the door and she's, hey, Max, how you doing? And before I could lie, I told her I did it again. And Next thing I know, this lady's giving me a big bear hug and she says, take off for three days, come back, test clean, and we'll start over. And here I am over 18 years later. Awesome. Awesome. That's good stuff, man. Really yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Now, you just touched on um, <clears throat> your family or your, your children and stuff like that. Can you just uh, let us know um, your, your children? How so many kids you have? I have four, three from my ex-wife a son from a, a, a prior another relationship after that marriage i have three uh three stepchildren with my current wife oh, wow. uh shoot we have i think six grandkids oh, all together wow. between the two of us right and uh loving being a grandpa even though i'm 53 and you know feel sometimes i shouldn't but it's kind of cool because i can keep up with them at least you yeah know? definitely yeah i can spoil them wrong <laughs> yeah 
So you started a football team, basically. <laughs> basically. You started a football team. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, it's you know, fun. it's been a journey, you know, like getting sober, like those kids I didn't see for nine years. Now I've been back in their lives as a present father for 18, over 18 years. Yeah. And we still have our struggles, you know, my three kids and I, but my son, I don't know if you guys ever heard, but like I shared my story one time. So starting five years ago, I'm going to give you a synopsis of what's happened the last five years and what brought me to write my book. So. Um, five years ago, three days after I would turn 13 years sober, my sister would pass, right, of Parkinson's. Sure. Eight months later, my brother would take his own life and lose his battle to addiction. Wow. Six months to the day on Thanksgiving Day, five years ago, my mom would pass away, literally of a broken heart. And then as recently as two years ago, my granddaughter would pass at three months and a day old. Wow. A week later, my son, who's now a year sober, would have a massive stroke at 30 years old and almost pass. Wow. <laughs> So it's been quite wow. a journey these last five years, but I thank God I, I have my recovery and I thank God that I have Apex that has helped me right focus yes. on the things I need to do and, and to stay on track, you know, doing the things I, I want to do and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. it's been it's when been did you, uh, yeah. How'd you when find did you A join Apex? I was yeah. just going to say yeah. that. Go ahead. Like, How did you find Apex? What, what brought you to Apex? <laughs> I joined Apex in March of 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Nice. Like I'm talking days. Chris Whitehead hit me up and he says, Hey man, I got something for you. And I think it's time you do this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, I think you need to join this group called apex, bro. And he goes, you won't regret it. Right. And I have it ever since. So I'm coming up on two years and um, awesome. I've loved every minute of it. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, it's a giant support awesome. group. Yeah. It's a giant support oh, group. <laughs> definitely. You see how, you see how fast it's been growing. Oh, I mean, uh, when you, when you joined at that uh, in 20, um, how many members were in that? There in, was in probably about 500 members at that <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. If they're Oops. at that time, you know what I mean? It was yeah. just starting to take yeah. off. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I was all gung ho in the beginning, like I said, but then things happen. Right. And, you know, we fall off and do, but like this year, I'm trying to end the year up with a bang going into 2022, because now I really have focused on what my purpose is, like who I am as a person right it's like when that happens right <laughs> yeah right you know I you focus on your why of, yet oh my you focus why, on your why oh yeah my why is so big it scares the shit out of me excuse me <laughs> but you know yeah absolutely right because i have guys like you to push me if i start slacking off because i know i'll get the message hey where's where's max going you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah we all gotta hold each other accountable man that's that's that's, yeah. that's the one motivational thing that you know this group uh, gives everybody. So, you know, we don't know a whole, you know, we don't know each other, but when we do see each other at, at events, but then when we do see each other and, you know, we, we communicate with each other, it's like, all right, you know, he's doing good or he's slacking a little bit. You know, where can I help him? Let's send him a video or let's send him a quick little message and say, Hey, what's going on? Is there something that you could help, you know, as, as, we could help you with or whatever the case Chris may be. Preaches, so we, right? A go giver. We gotta be go givers. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I've known Chris for 11 years now going on over 11 years and, and I, I recognized it after Lonnie had passed in March that I slacked big time, right? Like, okay, I just lost my job. Now I lost a best friend, coach, yeah. mentor, you know, a really good all around dude. Like, is that okay, not how God. you know Chris through Lonnie? That's that's your connection. To Chris? Yeah. Okay. I actually met Chris first, and then okay. I met Lonnie shortly thereafter. But I, you know, I Chris, uh, Brian Wright. And Steve Gamlin, I've known for over 11 years now. Oh, cool. So we kind of wow. all started running together way awesome. back when. Awesome. So it's awesome to see where Chris right is there. at today. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, Brian K. Wright helped me yeah. write my book. So awesome. right, that was I was going to get into that. I wrote my book because I needed not that I wanted to be this, you know, New York Times bestselling author. I needed a healing process for all that stuff that happened. And then after my brother passed away, I called Chris. He was the second person I called and I said, we need to write this book. And he goes, let's do it. Awesome. But, uh, awesome. you know, a lot of stuff that's happened. I got the book out and it's it's been a great journey to meet, you know, like guys like yourself and, and be a part of Apex that people truly care. They don't just say, I'm going to help you. And then you don't hear from them. They, they're like, here's my link. Call me. I'll yeah, be expecting yeah. your your call you know what i mean so max what are you uh what are you doing right now like uh what what are you doing for work and you know what's your career like so i've been a substance abuse counselor for the last 13 years right god bless you um so i work in the treatment industry and i work at a place locally which is which is cool 
um, because when I first moved to where I live now, which is Fallbrook, the avocado, avocado capital of the world, right? I was driving to Huntington Beach every day for three years. So that's a two hour drive one wow. way. Wow. Then I found this place where I work at now. And um, so my nine to five is a substance abuse counselor. And then I'm working on my coaching biz, which is helping, you know, CEOs, executives, high performers who are about to lose everything and their families overcome their addiction or whatever challenges, you know, that's, that's who I want to go. And I used to think I couldn't do it. Right. What do we call that? Imposter Imposter syndrome. syndrome. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then Chris would always remind me, he's like, dude, you've been in the trenches for 18 (laughs) years. Who better than you to help somebody, you know? So like, like I said, it it took me to do this little dance in my head, I guess you guys know about it. Like, am I good enough to be here? Should I? Cause we see all the successes, right? Like, of course, when we see Ryan and some of our, our apex members flying on a plane with him, we're like, man, (laughs) like, you know, I think to myself, like, holy shit, but like, I'm really going to step in. I have these last few months of who I am and what I want to do. And my why, like I said, is so big that there's no stopping now. Like, so I'm poor as awesome. gum. So awesome. I'm too dumb to that's, quit. That's, that's, funny. I, that's, I, that's I, really good stuff. I sent Chris something this morning. I was listening to Joel Osteen this morning. <laughs> I, I like to listen to his message. And it yeah. was uh, from patient to uh, physician, I think it was. And basically how um, we all go through this stuff and we work our way up to the point where now we have to take care of those behind us as a physician. So you go from being a patient, getting your treatment, to now you are giving the treatment. And it's kind of like our mission from God is to is to help people like so when you get the help and we get success and we get sober and we get successful whatever else is going on in life now it's up to us to take it to the next level and share that to the next person behind us that needs that help and we realize that in apex a lot of the people there have had you know alcohol issues drug issues whatever they're all like we're all the same people we're just in different stages of the journey once you realize that the imposter syndrome kind of goes away it's like wait a minute you know, two years ago, he was doing this, and that's where I was, and now I'm here, and they're there, and someone else comes behind you, and you're like, come on, you're one of us, you know? Yeah, I know you're screwed up, too, and we all, we're all screwed up, but let's be, <laughs> right? let's be screwed exactly. up together, you know? And it really is, yeah. Um, I think opening up and sharing is, is the biggest thing that I've found, is um, really just connecting with people, really just opening up, saying the truth. Like, everyone hides, like, oh, whatever, you know, I drank too much, I was on drugs, I was whatever, I was bankrupt, whatever stuff, you know, I'm divorced. All this other stuff that people hide in their lives, talk about it and figure out, you know, let everyone know your story. So maybe you can help them get one ahead, one step ahead of it. You know, we see someone going down the wrong road. Maybe we can say, hey, you might want to fix this before it goes gets too crazy. And same thing like the CEOs, you know, Sam, we know Sam's story. Um, Sam lost everything. Sam had a great business and from drinking, he lost everything and he's starting over now. And now he's yeah. coming back on top again, but he literally lost everything from alcohol. You know, lost yep. his wife, lost his business, lost everything, and it just happened so quick. Everyone thinks they can do it, and I'm different than everybody else, and and no one's not, and, and it gets you, and yep. uh, it's just so cool to, to share that story. So I just want to say I appreciate you for your whole story because it's just so many people I think can relate to it and say, you know, this is where he was, and look where he's at now. You know, if you're in that bad place right now, there's hope. There's hope for you. Exactly. And that's what I, you know, that's the message I want to carry, right? Is like, you can do it if I can do it, right? Like, if you see the a cover of my book, that was me at about a buck 30, just What's empty. What's the uh, name of your book? Fearless Happiness, but the happiness has a why in it. My okay. addiction, my battles, and my recovery. Um, you can get it on Amazon, but I wrote that too. Like you just said, Brian, it's like if someone read that book and says, wow, this guy can change his life, I can do it. And he just gave me the tools, right? So I put the 12 steps in layman's terms in, in a way that anyone, doesn't matter if you're an addict or not, right? say you suffer from anxiety or, or depression. I just put the my principles that I live by every day in a form that anybody could go, oh, I can do that. Wow. Maybe this guy, you know, and, and it's cool. I've gotten calls from people I don't know. Like my son read your book. You've helped him so much. He's, you know, he's getting out of prison soon. He feels like he's got a purpose now. And it's an amazing feeling, you know, right? It's better than any money in the world. Just the people know when you help people. I got people to reach out just from my little morning message that I do. And it's just honestly, it just like freaking feeds my soul. It's like amazing that, that people think enough of what I'm saying. And I, and pasta syndrome, I'm saying a message. Everyone's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm to myself. I'm like, no one wants to hear this, you know? And then someone reaches out and say, listen, I really needed that this morning. And 
it's just there's no better feeling in the world to know that you're helping people and you know again absolutely yeah because you can't put a price on that because you know it. it's just it's just yeah. really cool to know that um there's a couple of people in my life right now that are going through some stuff and they're reaching out and it's just wild like it really is wild it's, and to have that power you know what i've kind of realized if i have a power to help someone i need to do it and that's what we all need absolutely. to do we all need to do that you know we're all afraid to um, you know, except imposter. Uh, you know, my message doesn't mean right. anything. My thoughts don't mean anything. It does. There's right. a lot of people watching. There's a lot of people that are, that are, you know, watching what you do, and we represent what winning looks like every day, right? That's our mission, right? So, absolutely, at all times, right? Yeah, so right. that's why not only am I going to help the people who are suffering from addiction or whatever, but I'm going to educate and, and support the family so they could get a better. Because yes. it's not just, you know, like Benny, you said, right? Like it, you got woken up by your son who said, daddy, when are you going to stop? Hmm. Right? Like it affects everybody yeah. around you. Yes. I used to think the same thing when I would disappear for days and go, you know what? I'm not, I'm the one getting high. I'm not hurting. No, I'm hiding over here. How am I, you know, but now I'm not thinking about the mom who's worrying about me that at one time said she called the hospitals, the police stations. Cause hmm. she was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to help the whole family system in that process so they can all heal because they all need to heal. And I think, um, and a lot of times in my case, I think uh, drinking or, or whatever people do is an escape from the problems they're having in their life. And I think a lot of it is fixing your life so that you don't need to escape from it. Like, right? So I, I right. say it all the time. People say, thank God it's Friday. And it's like, if you're saying thank God it's Friday, you're missing your whole week. You're only living two days out of, out of the seven, you know? You should wake right. up and say, thank God it's Monday. And if you're not, fix your life. Right. So you're saying, thank God it's Monday. So we all wait, all right, work sucks, work sucks, Monday through Friday, and then Friday night, happy hour, let's drink our face off, let's drink, you know, to escape, right? But we shouldn't be escaping daily life, so we need to fix the problems in our lives that make us want to escape, and that helps us with the addictions that, uh, you know, we're using as an escape. Um, right. It's all part of the process, I think. I think a lot of addiction, I think, for all of us is, you know, something's going on that you don't want to deal with, so what do you do? You escape, you know, we go have a drink, we feel better. Mike Claudio, take the edge off. Did you hear his uh, his his yeah. um, podcast? Of taking the edge off. How? Yep. You know, listen. I had a rough day. Let me just have a drink to take the edge off. You know, or sometimes you know, listen. I had a great day. We had a win. Let's let's have a drink to right. celebrate. Right. <laughs> and no matter what you're doing, you're taking that edge off. And each time you take that edge off, you get a little bit duller, and you get a little bit slower, and you get a little bit less yep. productive, and and the the cycle just keeps continuing until the point where you hit that wall and you go, hey, psh. you know, you smack your head into the wall and go, hey, what's going on? Time to wake up. You know. <laughs> Sometimes exactly. people don't hit that wall. Sometimes it's too late, you know. And right, and as you know, with this pandemic, right, like nobody talks about it, but I'm going to share it right here. Overdoses went up. Well, I bet. I bet. Oh, yeah. People are still dying of overdoses more than COVID has killed people. Yes. If you know what I mean. 100%. Yeah. Right, because you're talking, you know, in my world, right. So they say the opposite of addiction is connection, right. So that's why they have meetings. So like-minded, like you know, like, like Apex, like minded before. people like get that. together. Yeah. Right. So we say go to meetings. Right. Find the people, you know, that have gone through the same thing you have, because, you know, there's a saying in the 12 step programs like it's either one alcoholic helping another. Right. That's how Dr. Bob and Bill W. met and one one drug helping another. Right. So when the pandemic hit. Right. Yeah. We had Zoom meetings, but they're not the same. You know, yeah. they're not the same as the in person. They're better in person. Yeah. Yeah. Big hug. I love hug. a hugger, right? Getting a hug from someone. It's just like, yeah, hey, I'm a, a see, hug, I'm a hugger, know? too. You know? Yeah. When it's I like, see you guys at the next event, don't trip. You're going to get a hug from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big hugger. Um, you know, but, that, that was God. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go. No, I was no, just no. going to say the pandemic. Right. Created a lot more addicts a lot more mental health issues right because people didn't have the outlet that they normally had to yeah. go talk to someone right yeah. they isolated right yeah. so yeah so I, i'm just you know I, I yeah i'm a big 12 stepper but i'm also like whatever you find that works we're gonna stick to it and we're gonna go for it you know what i mean yeah. but it's up to you and like i can't do the work just say for instance benny goes yeah when i get sober i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and i'm like okay benny show me yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Let's go do it. it. You got to show me you got to want it, right? Because yeah. So I like w when I when it was my turn to 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 you know get away from all the all the mess that I was in the head trash and and you know the drinking and stuff like that. You know, kind of like Apex, you got to surround yourself with the right people. And and mm -hmm. I had to kind of like get rid of not because I hated them or not because I I didn't want to be around them, but I had to get away from the you know the people that you know the Friday night. Uh, people that I was just going to go out and, ha you know, just go out and have a drink with or the weekend people or, right. you know, 
I, I had to step away from all that just to heal myself, not because I wanted to, uh, not, not because I hated these people. It's just because I had to heal myself. If I didn't heal me, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to be around all these people all the time. So uh, getting back to my first Apex Live, you know, I was, I think it was five months in not drinking anything. And all these people, you know, they're having an occasional drink and stuff like that. And I'm hanging out. I, I have no idea. And I'm there with Jessica. I'm there with Brian. I'm there with Maddie. And, you know, they, they're all having an occasional drink. And I'm sitting there drinking seltzers or, or um, you know, or of club soda and stuff. And, you know, I felt weird for a little bit. But you know what? At the end, I was like, man, I feel damn good. You see right. everyone getting sloppy. You see everyone being stupid. Yeah. Like, I, got control of this. I was yeah. like, holy, I was like that. <laughs> you know, you see somebody like starting to starting to get a little tipsy and start talking trash. And you're like, man, I was like that, huh? <laughs> so it's, right. it's, it's you're like, damn, you know? I was probably worse. Shoot. Yeah. I'm glad I stopped. Yeah. But, you know, 12 months, 12 months later, I mean, my birthday hit December 1st and that was my 12 month going into it. And, and that was the greatest message that I that was the greatest birthday gift that I gave to myself. To be able to say, all right, this is my 12. I'm going on my 12 month and I'm still doing it and I'm still kicking ass doing it because I feel good. I feel great. I'm doing the work. Um, the people around me love me more uh, and I'm and I'm helping people out there. And I, I, I just started pushing the message out there yeah. um, as, yeah. as much as I didn't want to. I, I'm doing it. Yeah, you, need you know to. what? Because that's you, that's if I could help one person. That one person, I, that meant a lot to me that I could help one person, you know? Absolutely. And I'm not saying, look, I, I, I needed to go into AA meetings or I was a drunk or whatever the case may be, but I, I knew deep inside I had a problem. Right. And the people around me didn't know that I had a problem. I knew I had a problem. And then what really brought it out was my little guy. Yep. And that's what counts, right? When you recognize it, then you know, like, okay, like no one's telling me this, but I know. So, yeah. Definitely. Time to make Definitely. a change. Definitely. Congratulations on your one year. Thank That's you awesome, so man. much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank, congratulate you, man. Jesus, yeah, man. 18 yeah, years and you're kicking ass, brother. You know, and it's it's great to be doing, uh, you know, great to be in Apex and, you know, being in this family. And it's just it's just an amazing thing. You get high on life. You don't need anything else, right? That's the, that's yeah, the goal, definitely. right? Live your life right and get high on life. You don't need anything else. Absolutely. And that's, that, you know, being a grandpa is part of that. Being a husband, yeah. you know what I mean? Like now I, I get it. Like I enjoy it. You know what I mean? And like I said, you know, and we talk about it. You guys know the Dream 25. I'm totally going to revamp mine, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, there's just for example, like say Ryan goes, hey, man, he's not going to post on Facebook, you know, hey, dude, I've been drinking too much. I need your help, Max, right? Yeah. And blast it. So mine's going to be kind of like what Jessica talked about on, you know, uh, the podcast I did with her, her in her business, you know, getting all those referrals. Right. So that's kind of what mine's going to be. Right. Because there's going to be people that I might know that, hey, I know this guy, Max, he can help you because yeah. he's been there, done that. You know what I mean? Super important. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that's good stuff. So where can uh, where can people find you? Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which I hardly even check, yeah. right? LinkedIn. Um, but those are the major ones is uh, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Good stuff. And so podcast we'll, uh, on, uh, on Apple and all that good stuff. Yeah, so you can uh, find my podcast on iTunes and Spotify. I, it's on all the major ones now. So I've been, I happened to click on iHeartRadio and my fearless Boom. happiness yeah, podcast link, yeah. popped up. Boom, boom. Like, wow. So we're going we're gonna to drop your link uh, in the comments below. Okay. This way, uh, the people can uh, can can find you, yeah. and also find your definitely, podcast. Definitely. All right. I'm gonna dump this right here and here. You know, watch, I'll be able to see it right here. Hold How long have you been doing the podcast? Uh September, I believe, was a year. So, but cool. Cool. 14, 14 months, fifteen months now. Nice. And you do them. Uh, you doing every week or how often are you doing them? Yeah, I release a new episode every week, every Wednesday at 12 a.m. in the morning. Nice. Very cool. What's the podcast called? Fearless Happiness. Same Good. podcast. Same the Keeping the same tag straight across. That's Consistency. Awesome. Branding. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And just remember, the why is in the happiness. Not an I, but a why. There's a reason mm -hmm. I did it. Nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> a big stand out in the crowd, right. yeah. Now I know why you know your why. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, good stuff, good stuff. So, uh, anything else you'd like to share with us, uh, Max? What's the message going forward? What, uh, what, what's your from your years on Earth here? What's what's the number one thing that you want to share? 
Oh, wow. So I've been on this earth for 53 years now. So if there's one thing I want to share with all the stuff that I went through, and it's something you guys know well with the G code, right? Um, if I have any advice for anybody, whether you're going through good times, bad times, always find that thing you're grateful for, oh. right? Practice gratitude, attitude of gratitude, right? When I was taught early on that gratitude is an action word, you need to show me. So I had to show people I was grateful, not just talk about it, right? So that way that I meant what I said, right? So I say what I mean, and I mean what I say, because I'm grateful for everything I get to go through, good, bad, or indifferent. So if I have any advice for anybody is, you know, and I've been through some tough times and I'm sure everybody else has is I, even during those times, I found the things that I could be, that I could be grateful for so that I could help people, you know, whether it was my family or, or people that are getting sober, right. So that I was always present for them because if I'm not staying grateful for the things, you know, whether they're small, big or large, I'm not present. And I find when I am grateful that I'm more present for the people around me. So if that's anything that makes Great sense, message. That makes 100%. It's funny. I just had that conversation with someone that's going through some stuff and I says, you got to be grateful even for the bad stuff because that's what's making you grow. That's what's making yep. you learn. That's what's making you get out of your comfort zone. You know, that pain, you got to be grateful for the pain because without that pain, you wouldn't grow. You'd be stuck. And, yeah. um, you know, if I look back at stuff that's happened to me and, you know, if if that stuff didn't happen, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I wouldn't be in Apex. I wouldn't, you know. So at the time when this stuff's going bad, and you're saying, "Poor me. Why me? Why is this happening to me?" And you got to say, "Thank you for this happening to me because this pushed me out of my comfort zone and got me unstuck." And and I'm grateful for that. And um, you know, back to the same thing. Uh, things don't happen to you; they happen for you. And as soon as you realize that, and, and you get that that right in your head, so when something happens to you, instead of saying, "Poor me," you say, "Hey, wait a minute." What's the lesson to be learned now? And pivot. Absolutely. Right? And as soon as you get that right in your head and you start to figure that out, life starts to change. That's like been a new thing for me. Like instead of why is this happening to me? Why why am I this why is this going on in my life? Say, like, wait a minute, why is this going on in my life? It's making me grow. It's making me push me. It's making me get uncomfortable. We I said all the time, we get uh comfortable being uncomfortable because you don't want to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Right. Right. And see that's when I went to the the apex live in february of this year right is when i got to meet a lot of people i was going through 75 hard with chris and iconic remember when he started that so i would do videos and i would say the same thing i'd be walking and i would tell people oh well, i can't feel my legs right now because it was before my back surgery <laughs> and i'd almost trip and i became the get to guy like everybody i met at, at apex live were like max oh you're the get to guy and i because i would tell them look i get to put myself through this pain yes. you know i get to yes. and instead of asking why me tell yourself why not me yeah, right yeah. because we get taught that life happens for us not yeah, to us yeah. and if we can just you know like chris says lean into the suck mm. and i've done that plenty of times yes. right because there's usually a lesson we need to learn yes learn the lesson so, yep learn the lesson and some. and then he threw at me one time he goes well there's probably a lesson within that lesson i'm like okay chris slow down <laughs> I, get what you're trying to say. Love I love him. you bro love when him, i get yeah. it but, but you know what ever since i've had that and i had that conversation with him years ago that's what i do and i visualize myself when i'm going through a challenge uh, if you guys all remember Earl Campbell from the Houston Oilers, I just remember like getting the ball and going up and that guy was, his legs were so big, right? Like people would have a hard time. So I would always tackle like my challenges, the person trying to tackle me, I'm Earl Campbell. I'm going to run him over and I'm going to score that. Yeah, yeah. So, and I still do that today. So yeah, that's, that's what I would tell people is just find the things a little big or small to be grateful for. And it'll, it. it'll change yeah. the way you think. Well, that old term is I have to go to work in the morning or I get to go to work in the morning. I mean, it's got a whole different feel to it. You know, there's a lot Absolutely. of people that don't get to go to work, that are starving, that are homeless, that are, they don't get to go to work. And you're complaining that you're going to sit in traffic. Oh, I have to sit in traffic. No, I get to sit in traffic because I get to go to work. So I get to earn a paycheck. I get to support my family. And it just, you know, it just yeah. totally changes your head. It's it's really just it's so simple, but it's just the whole outlook. It does a 360 exactly. for you. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. Good so, stuff, man. So, what do you see yourself going forward? What's what's the next mission for you? What where's what's your next uh, thing that you're striving for? Well, creating and uh, getting my business up and running for 2022. 
Definitely. And seeing all of you guys at the next Apex Live event. So That's the, what I the really Goon think. Squad Apex is um, yep. beginning of February, I think, right? February <laughs> 7th or something like that, that Friday, something like that. That's is that the Goon Squad event? The Goon Squad having? Live, yes. So it's a live with the it's featuring the Goon yeah. Squad. So that's going to be a and good then one. MDM MDM was just dropped. the The dates were dropped. I think it was June third, June fourth. Yeah, and then the yeah, next, something like that. So yeah. I, that's now. See, that's I, I want to make the MDM this year because I didn't get to yeah. go this. Oh, that was that's when I year. that's when I joined. Um, I sold Thomas's house, introduced him to Jessica. They hit it off, um, and then Jessica's like, I got a ticket to MDM, you're going. And I was like, ah, she's like, I got a free ticket, you're going. Like, you're going. I'm like, all right, book the plane, let's go. And I hit it, and it was just, like, eye-opening. I was like, I yeah. never even know who Ryan Steumann was. And, you know, Thomas had mentioned him, and he, I sold his house to move to Texas to go to this group Apex. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, Thomas joined a cult, you know, like they all say about us. <laughs> and I say, people say it all the time to me, oh, you joined a cult. And I'm like, yeah, a culture. To me, cult, yeah. right? Cult is just part of the word. Culture the culture of Absolutely. Apex, representing winning and, and supporting each other and, you know, go-givers and all this other stuff. Yes, yeah, this is a cult that we're part of, and it's a good thing, you know, it's a culture. But um, the minute I saw that culture, I said, I got to be part of this. Like, I, I, I need more of this. It's like, you just felt home. It's like, you know, and I love everyone walks up and they, they, you share your conversation, you share your story, and they're like, I appreciate you for sharing. And you're like, I appreciate you. And like, for someone to say, I appreciate you, that's like one of my favorite lines to tell people these days now. Like if someone, you know, you connect with someone and just say, hey, I appreciate you. It really just feels good. Like, you know, it's just a nice, I do appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you talking to me. You know, it's just a cool thing. And everyone there said that. And it was something to me that just really clicked. And I was like, I got to be part of this. And then yeah. I was there six times in six months for between lives and yeah. then entrepreneur meetups and and then I, just, well, I think you 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 sucked me in what like two weeks uh, after your MDM. I, I think uh, I think at MDM I was like Ben, you got to be part of this. He kept uh, yeah. he kept sending me pictures. I'm like, dude, you gotta you gotta come. You gotta be here. You gotta be part of this. Yeah, yeah see, that's my, my goal for next year too is to join entrepreneurs to level up the entrepreneurs. Awesome, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, we're meeting. Uh, yeah, 13th and 14th January. So yeah, level up on before January. Come hang out with us. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be busy. We to. got uh, January 13th, 14th entrepreneurs, and then it's like sixth, seventh is live. And then uh, Stacy Rashi's got her event down in Florida. I'm gonna hit that. It's a twenty fifth, sixth, seventh, something like that area. So that's uh, some busy traveling months coming up, but um, they're all awesome. I don't know if you've been to been around Stacy at all, but Stacy, uh, I went to her last event in Tampa, and it was awesome. I mean, really, just good, good. Yeah, event. I haven't met her yet, but she was one of my guests early on in my uh, when I started my podcast. So she's she awesome. did great stuff. Yeah, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, good people, and her her whole crew that she rolls with is it's all good people so we had a lot of fun in tampa awesome. a month or so ago. Awesome. yeah good stuff but all right awesome uh max it was awesome having you on uh appreciate you sharing your story and, and keeping it real and um just letting everyone know that there, there is a future if you're struggling right now and you're going through some stuff you're not alone you're not alone on that island as a lot of us think we are and um and i'm sure anyone can reach out to you and uh, i'm sure you'd be Absolutely. happy to uh help them and, and again like so we're all, all of us are an open book anything you need in life um just lean on us we're, that's what we're here for we're here we're here to give to you and yep. um all good stuff anything else benny uh no i think we're pretty good i mean max uh, it was a pleasure talking to you um uh, thank you for sharing all this uh, beautiful story and I'm, I'm glad you're doing amazing things and and i know you're going to do more amazing things um, with your podcast and everything else going on. So yeah. thank you. I got to book you. a spot on there. Uh, I'm lining up my podcast. So uh, we get on your schedule. Yeah, we'll go connect after this. And we're gonna, we'll get on your calendar and we'll do a session on your podcast. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So I'd love to have you guys as a guest. But thank you first and foremost for having me on. It was definitely my honor and a privilege to be here with you guys so thank yeah, you for asking me to do this yes, Brian. yes definitely i'm glad you came on like i said it's, it's a great story and I, I love the variation that we, we're trying to bring on here it's not just it's just you know everything's it's a everything's apex is a business business thing and it's so far from being a business thing i mean it is but right. it's not it's it's a people right. thing it's a life thing and the business is just a byproduct of that and uh it's just you know and stories like yours are you know it's obviously uh uh, you know, drug and alcohol counseling isn't a isn't a multi million dollar uh, business for you, but the the value that you are of changing people's lives is is more valuable than any million dollar business out there, um, which is which is really just like I said you're changing the world, and we appreciate it for you. The world appreciates you for that. Doing God's thank work. You. So thank you, know, you, sir. Good stuff. Definitely, good stuff. definitely. 
Well, thanks for uh, letting me sit in tonight. And uh, yeah, I don't know, Sam. Uh, sit in Sam's. Just, we can let Sam back in next Sam's week. shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this was a, a good this one, was a Sam. Privilege. I think this Benny was, a was our too, uh, man. So this was awesome. So you I, were I, our you know, first guest, second guest on this show, I think, Benny. You were the first guest, I think. I was the first guest, yeah. First guest, yeah. So it goes from first guest. <laughs> that to, was like uh, the trial. Host. That was like the trial run for them. The trial run. He was the guinea pig on this show. Yeah, <laughs> I was the guinea pig, and I look look at where it is today. So uh, and then I, now I'm hosting one of his shows. So that's awesome. a, that's an awesome thing. Awesome. That's awesome. Good stuff. The good thing. Good stuff. So. Max, right, I'd good. love to see you at, at the next Apex Live. Yes, um, definitely. You ever need anything from me? Please, please reach out. I'm always around. Uh, awesome. Inbox me. You could, you know, I'll send you my uh, my cell phone number, and you could uh, text yeah. me personally. Awesome. And um, vice you know, versa. And I'll definitely. give you yes. when you give me the message. I'll send you my number. Perfect. Both well, you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you definitely. again for having me. And I will be at the next event if I gotta crawl my way there. That's it. That's, That's it. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll be waiting. For my, I'll you be waiting out. for my hug. So. That's right. I'll hold hey, you man. to it. <laughs> I'm a hugger. <laughs> That's awesome. Good stuff. I love it. Love Good it, stuff, man. All right, brother. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Have a great night, man. Thank you, everyone, right, for watching. Night, everybody. We'll see you next Monday, 8.30 live. Get some fire live. All right, right bro. God bless.